Welcome to this video presentation about the anatomy and biomechanics of the Achilles tendon. My name is Mark Schmitz, I'm a lecturer of anatomy, physiotherapy and musculoskeletal ultrasound with a special interest in the shoulder girdle. And I'm the founder of the anatomy and physiotherapy Facebook page, where the newest ideas, pictures, videos and latest evidence-based information about anatomy and physiotherapy are posted on almost a daily basis. High quality and spam free. Please like us. Achilles, the ancient Greek hero of the Trojan War, gives his name to the Achilles tendon. Achilles was killed by a poisoned arrow which embedded in his only vulnerable point, his heel. In this presentation, we're not going to discuss this story, but the anatomy and biomechanics of the tendon named after Achilles. The Achilles tendon is the thickest and strongest tendon in the human body. It is also the commonest tendon to rupture. It begins near the middle of the calf, fusing the gastrocnemius muscle proximately. It's a broad close to its origin and receives muscle fibers from soleus almost to its lower end. It's located in the posterior superficial compartment of the lower leg. The gastrocnemius muscle is a fusiform muscle originating from the femoral condyles and posterior joint capsule. In a large majority of specimens, the medial head of the gastrocnemius extends more distally than the lateral head. See picture A. Although the medial head may be equal length or slightly shorter than the length of the lateral head. See picture B. The gastrocnemius muscle fibers are posterior to its aponeurosis, whereas the soleus muscle fibers are anterior to its aponeurosis. The soleus lies deep to the gastrocnemius and is a broad, flat, pennate muscle. It acts only on the ankle joint and can be palpated on either side of the gastrocnemius when the subject stands on the tiptoes. Together with the gastrocnemius, it forms the three-headed triceps surae. The triceps surae acts to plantar flex the ankle joint via its common tendon, the Achilles tendon. The plantaris is a small thin muscle originating from the popliteal surface of the femur with its tendon running distally between the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles. It inserts into the medial aspect of the calcaneus, anterior to the Achilles tendon. It is absent in up to 8% of individuals. The space between the two heads of the left gastrocnemius is the small triangular area, bordered by the contour of the heads of the gastrocnemius muscle. It's a side at which the fibers from both heads cross. In this posterior view you can see the lateral head and the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle, the aponeurosis of soleus muscle, fibers from the lateral and medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. The average length of the Achilles tendon is 14.8 cm and ranges between 11 and 26 cm. The mean width of the Achilles tendon changes between 1.1 and 4.0 cm depending on the exact location. The relative contribution of the soleus and gastrocnemius to the Achilles tendon varies between subjects. Each part of the triceps surae is the beginning of a particular part of the Achilles tendon and can be dissected separately. Generally, the fibers initially located in the posterior layer, originate from the gastrocnemius muscle. Then, as they pass distally, they become spiral and, in the most distal portion, are located in the posterior lateral part of the Achilles tendon. In contrast, the fibers from the soleus muscle are packed in the central and medial parts of the tendon. In this picture, you can see the fibers from the medial, and lateral part of the medial head of the gastrocnemius. The fibers from the lateral head of the gastrocnemius, the fibers from the soleus, 
and the common insertion of the Achilles tendon to the tuber calcanei. Click the pause button and study this figure closely with thinking about the consequences for clinical reasoning before proceeding with this presentation. The calcaneal insertion of the Achilles tendon is highly specialized and has been described as an anthesis organ, designed to aid stress dissipation from the tendon to its bony attachment. Here you can see Kager's fat pad. Fibrous connections linking the fat pad to the Achilles tendon anchor and stabilize it proximally. This is the muscle belly of the flexor hallucius longus, with which lies deep to the deep fascia on the anterior surface of the tendon. And the retrocalcaneal bursa, which lies between the Achilles tendon and the posterior surface of the calcaneus. See the red arrow pointing to the 1 mm thick retrocalcaneal bursa. In vitro anatomical research showed that the insertion of the transverse section of the Achilles tendon regularly had a crescent shape corresponding to the posterior calcaneal prominence. In transverse sections all specimens had a curved appearance. The majority of anatomical textbooks show the Achilles tendon's terminal insertion about the superior margin of the posterior calcaneus without any exact location. Note the contiguous longitudinal individual fibers of the Achilles tendon to the plantar fascia as marked by the arrows. This is a graph illustrating the gross evaluation of insertion locations of the Achilles tendon on the posterior aspect of the calcaneus. This gross evaluation revealed 55% of the limbs had the Achilles tendon insertion on the superior one-third of the calcaneus, 40% inserted on the middle one-third and 5% inserted on the inferior one-third of the calcaneus. Knowledge about the possible Achilles tendon insertion sites is important for clinical reasoning. The photograph shows an Achilles tendon fascicle originating at the anterior aspect of the distal Achilles tendon and bridging the retrocalcaneal bursa to insert at the anterior part of Hackland's tuberosity. Note the small plantaris tendon joining the Achilles tendon and the localization of the retrocalcaneal bursa. The Achilles tendon does not have a true synovial sheath. Rather, the tendon is encased in a parathenon, which is composed of thin membranes that permit gliding of the tendon within the surrounding tissues. Three vascular territories were identified, with the midsection supplied by the perineal artery and the proximal and distal section supplied by the posterior tibial artery. The midsection of the Achilles tendon was markedly more hypovascular than the rest of the tendon. 80% of Achilles tendon ruptures occur within this region. At this location, the tendon is the narrowest with the smallest cross-sectional area of the entire structure. With compounded degeneration and insufficient nutrients to repair the damaged tissue, within this naturally avascular zone, tendon rupture is common. Okay. I hope you have a better understanding about the anatomy of the Achilles tendon. In the next part, in part 2, I will discuss the biomechanics and some pathologies of the Achilles tendon more closely. The list with the 32 used references for this presentation can be downloaded for free at kinicare.nl. The default language of the page is Dutch. Click the little flags for English or German. Click Education. And after entering the page, again, education. Choose in the scroll bar social media and download the reference list. This video presentation has been made by Anatomy and Physiotherapy and Kinecare. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.